Good evening, Room 25. This is Mrs. King, and I'll be your fourth grade gate teacher this year at Rockland Elementary School. It was really great to see all your smiling faces today as you picked up your materials um, at the school. Um, those things in the tub are yours to keep um, to use for distant learning, and we'll go over some of the materials that were in that tub um, during my presentation tonight, but most of those things will be for you when we start uh, our live classroom meetings starting tomorrow. Um, so let's get going on some details about our classroom this year. I'm gonna first tell you a little bit about myself. I've been living here in Rockland over 20 years. Uh, this is my 15th year teaching in Rockland Unified. Both of my, um, both of my um, children went to through the Rockland schools. My daughter just graduated last uh, spring at Sac State and she's going on to get her master's in social work and my son graduated in uh, June at Whitney High School. They just had a drive through graduation which was a nice uh, celebration for all the seniors. He'll be moving on to Chapman University majoring in data analytics um, and he's hoping to get down to Southern California probably for second semester because they're there they will be online learning as well and he's going to be a member of their basketball team so we're super happy to have a student athlete and both of our kids continuing their education. But the King household is gonna get pretty busy because um, we're all gonna be online in the fall. My husband works from home, so it is definitely busy with all of our uh, computer learning and, and working from home. Things I love is traveling to Hawaii, spending time with my friends and family, and of course, Starbucks and chocolate and the A's. Um, we love baseball and our family, so Oakland A's is our team that we root for. Some things about distant learning. Um, we're all in this together, and I wanna say that I really try to have families, parents help me with um, the classroom learning. And in fourth grade, I really try to emphasize responsibility, organization, and being prepared. And those are kind of the traits that I really want to focus with your uh, students about. Um, Distant learning, the most important thing that you can help your child with is to have him or her show up for the live meetings. We will be meeting live on a regular basis three times a day. In the beginning of our learning, we're gonna be meeting four times a day starting tomorrow. And the reason we're doing that is so that we can develop relationships interact with our peers, the students can get to know me, I can get to know them. Um, so I really want them to show up and you can help me with that by making sure they get to the meetings on time and ready to go. Being prepared, like I said, is a responsibility trait I really wanna help them with this year. Um, one of the things you can help them with at home is helping them design a workspace. Um, this workspace should be free from distractions, so not near the TV or pets or their little brother and sister that could distract them from their learning. It should really be like a space that looks like school, maybe a desk, um, a chair where they can sit upright, not in their bed, um, because you need a place for their computer. If you need a Chromebook from school, we have them available to you. So if you still need to check one that out, let me know because it'll be the exact Chromebook they would use in the regular classroom here. So just let me know and I'll make sure you get one of those. The tub of materials that I gave you today, that should be next to your computer and at your workspace because all of those things we're gonna be using in our class Class meetings. I'm going to show your your child um, how to set up their notebooks. Um, they'll need paper and pencil for certain things. I don't want them typing on the computer all the time. I want them doing paper and pencil things as well. So um, that tub needs to be nearby the computer so they'll have it there and they won't be you know chasing around for it during our class meeting time together. So workspace is really important. Daily routine. Um, I'm going to make sure if you get your kids to the meetings on time and have them check in with me, I'll make sure that I give you the information in advance so you're ready for the week. I know that all of you are really busy with your families and lots of things going on and you're probably working at home. So I want to make sure you know what's going on in our classroom. So on Sunday night, I'll send home by email a weekly checklist. I'll also post it in Google Classroom for the students to look at. Um, on this checklist will be things that are due 
that week, as well as all of our meeting times for the week so that you know when your child has to show up on the computer for live meetings. You can, um, you can count on from me that each morning um, by 8 a.m., the daily work side of what your child needs to complete for that day will be posted in Google Classroom. If you were in Mrs. Bradford's class last year, this work side is gonna be very similar to what you did last year for distance learning. The difference in fourth grade is that it's a daily work side instead of weekly work side. So you'll be getting that on a Monday and that work side is due on Monday um, because really the time that I give you to do the work site, it shouldn't take longer than a day to complete or the time allotted for school, which is 240 minutes for distance learning. So you really should be able to get it done. If you just can't get it done on that day, it's not gonna be marked late until the Friday of that week. But I would really like so I can give feedback for you to turn those in on a daily basis. Monday through Friday, there'll be a class meeting at 8.30 always through Zoom, and you're gonna access that through Clever, which I will show you in just a minute. Throughout our learning time together, there's gonna be a mixture of live instruction, independent work and small group work. And each one of those components for distance learning is very important um, for your child to take part in and participate in um, to get a full um, experience. And really with GATE, we wanna do enriching things and the beauty of GATE is discussion. So our class meeting in small groups are gonna be discussing our work and having some conversations and a GATE classroom is all about the level of discussions and how we can push their learning through our discussions. So that's why I really want them to show up for those live meetings. This is kind of what our class uh, daily schedule looks. Um, you can go up here to a detailed link that will show you a little bit more, but this is the um, structure of our day. So at eight, I'll put classwork into Google Classroom, or by eight for sure. 8.30, um, we will be having our class meeting um, live, and that will probably be a, a math lesson live in the morning to start off. And then from nine to 10, there's gonna be some independent work. Now, if for some reason you can't get it done between nine and 10, do it later in the day, but that's my block of time that I think you're gonna be doing independent work like a school day. Now in those that independent work time from nine to 10, I'm gonna be pulling small groups. Um, and I'm gonna start that pretty soon to get to know the kids um, in a smaller group setting rather than 30 or 26 on our group meetings, class meetings. Um, 10 to 10, 15 is like a recess break. Um, take a break, walk around, go outside, stretch, get something to eat. 10, 15 to 10, 45 um, will be another class meeting. And this time it's gonna focus on language arts. Um, and then 10, 45 to 12 will be our language arts block with independent work and small groups. Now at the beginning, during independent work, I'm gonna have um, some open lab time, teacher lab time where they can um, get on their computer and talk with me through a Google Meet um, when we really get into independent work um, that might be a struggle for them. I want that me to be available to them to help. So I will have some of those open times for that so they can ask me questions right then while they're working. 12 to 1 is a all Rockland Elementary School lunch hour. So if you have kids in other classes, you can um, know that we're all going to have lunch together. Um, and so that's kind of when, um, you know, we all should take a break <laughs> from the computer, get outside, walk around, have some lunch. Um, after lunch, I'm going to have a pre-recorded uh, read aloud. Your child can read it then or listen to it then or at another time. Um, but that's when I'm going to post it for the read aloud. And there'll be some novel study work for that. Later um, in the next couple of weeks, we'll be actually reading a novel together. And that's when they can do that novel study work also. At 1.30, we're gonna meet again for a class meeting, and we might talk a little bit about the novel study when we get into that. Um, I also wanna do project learning, um, GATE. We have some great project learning activities that I would love to do. So we're gonna see how distant learning goes and, and if we can do some of the project learning as well. Um, so our class meeting time at 1.30 is kind of like a wrap up of the day and what we've been working on. And then to kind of go over any social studies or science, um, things I need to clarify um, for the afternoon work. 
In the afternoon from two to three will be science, social studies, VAPA, PE, independent work. And this will mostly be um, Tuesday through Friday will be the expected times because um, Monday is our shortened day. So on Tuesday or Monday and Wednesday, I will have some VAPA things for you to do from Mrs. McCabe. Tuesday and Thursday will be our PE. And typically Tuesday through Friday will be our so science and social studies. So actually VAP will be Wednesday, Friday, PE Tuesday, Thursday, and then um, science and social studies um, will be Tuesday through Friday. So that's, um, you can count on those things for our schedule. Moving along, um, so we have all these things for your child to log in on. Um, today, when you picked up your materials, you got a login cheat sheet um, in your materials tub. That'll tell you how to get on your Chromebook and Clever, but this slide also um, will tell you that as well. You need to make sure whatever computer your child is working on, that they are working on through their Rockland USD Google account. If they're working on your account, some of the apps that we assign won't work, the links won't work. So make sure, and I'll show you on this slide here, it's their first name, dot last name, at rocklandusd.org. And then their password is their nine digit number. And that is on the login card that I provided you today. So you can look at that with your child to get in. Um, for Clever, Clever is an app that should be on your school account. So if you logged in correctly into Google, your child will see this little C at the top and that gets them to all the apps that we use. So on Clever, You'll see we use Benchmark for Language Arts. That app will be there. ST Math is our um, math practice um, app program that your child will be required to do um, a little bit each day on. And this is a great program that the kids love. It's very, um, it's, uh, it paces them as they go so they can work at their own pace and their own level. And um, it's a really great differentiating tool as well as a new app that we're gonna use this year called Freckle. Freckle is an assessment tool for us as well as lets the students work at their own pace. In our gate environment, this is wonderful because your kids can work outside of the um, level and push themselves to work even um, further and develop their skills. So it's awesome. We will use uh, Vocabulary Studies Weekly is a social, our social studies program. So I'll be assigning things for that. News ELA is really engaging news articles. And I like to use that sometimes for our language arts close reads. So that will be an app your child might use. Flipgrid we use all the time for videotaping um, uh, prompts and things so your peers can really interact and see you on camera. Duolingo is for Spanish. We won't be having Spanish like you did um, last year. So I'll be putting Duolingo in our Clever apps so that you can have access to that so your child can still grow with their Spanish lear learning. Sora is a library app where they can check out library books, which is great. And Khan Academy and Khan Mappers is a pace-based um, work at your own level for language arts and math program that your child can take, per, take part in. Uh, Zoom meetings, you can log in on our Zoom meetings through Clever um, after I give you the link. And then TrueFlix is a fun like video-based um, language arts kind of program. So those are the apps on Clever that they will be using. Google Classroom, this slide will show you how your child gets into Google Classroom, and this is our class code. So I'll be going over with that with them um, on our first class meeting, but if tonight or they want to go through that, um, they can. Um, this was also in the login sheet that I gave them today, so some of them might have already gotten into Google Classroom um, for our class um, today, which is great. Here's some things they need to know about Google Classroom. I'll assign things at 8 a.m. Uh, on that day, daily for that daily work. Um, it'll all be in a slideshow format. Um, if it's not a slideshow format, I'll give you the link so it'll be really easy for them to get to the work. Um, and then I'll show you what Google Classroom looks like here. Um, it's gonna be organized by week. So when you look at it, um, all the assignments for that week will be underneath uh, on a daily basis. So here's the stream. So I usually do like 
you know, shout outs, notes to the kids in the stream. The classwork is where they actually get their assignments. So week one, August 12th through 14th. So you'll have a week one, August 12th checklist. That'll tell you when all our Google Meets are for the, for the week, okay? And then underneath that is gonna be this daily learning slide. So for week one, you're gonna have a daily learning slide for the 12th, the 13th, and the 14th. Only three because there's just three days in that week. So it'll be organized by week. And then when they're done with the learning slide, they just turn it in um, that day. So that's Google Classroom. That's what it will look like for your students. So I want to make sure I didn't skip a slide. Okay, so that was Google Classroom. So digital citizenship, we are really recommending that the students always use their username and password, like I said, for RUSD on all school assignments. The websites provided by me will be safe. I try to get all safe YouTubes um, so that your children aren't going off onto um, different sites. You will need to monitor a little bit and make sure that they're staying on our classroom sites that I assign. Um, I encourage that you take have them take breaks away from the computer and I will assign some non-computer activities. Um, what I'm looking at for digital citizenship and in our class meetings is that they still use their bulldog paws, which is problem solving, always care, work hard and show respect. So I'm hoping that they, um, can kind of problem solve by um, asking you for help, asking me for help via email, um, asking a peer for help on the class meetings or small group, showing up, um, and always caring and showing respect to their peers and to me in the class meetings. Um, and working hard, of course. We're all going to be working hard for distance learning. So here's kind of my expectations for our Zoom meetings. I really would love everybody to be on time. So maybe have them wake up early, log into the meeting before class starts. I have to let them in for the meeting. So that'll be a few minutes before um, the class meeting starts. Having a quiet workspace, of course, for all of our meetings, being prepared, your computer is charged, your camera is on, and you have materials ready. So that work tub is right next to your computer. So computer uh, camera on. Many of the students like to just do their avatar and turn the camera on. I am gonna ask them and asking you, when we are live, please make sure that their camera is on. So if their camera's on, that means they need to be wearing um, school appropriate clothing, sitting up straight and be in view of the camera. So not in their bed, um, not, I had someone last year on a trampoline. So not jumping on the trampoline. So just making sure they're presentable like they would be going to school. Um, I'll always have them on mute when they come in. So then I'll um, have them off mute when they're participating. The small groups, I usually open up without muting because I want them to talk to each other in the small groups and stuff. And there will be a time when I unmute them all so they can just chat while I'm in the room with them for the Zoom meeting. Um, and participation, I will try to get everybody to participate on the meeting. Um, so making sure they know how to mute and unmute themselves in the meeting would be helpful to help them maybe with the first meeting on that. The chat in the Zoom meetings is basically just for questions. And if I ask a group question, they might chat on the side, but it's not for um, Bitmojis and peer um, chatting. So I'm gonna show you this Google Calendar that you can utilize. I'm gonna show with the kids too. They will all be on, I will share this Google Classroom or actually Google Calendar with all of them. So then they can see when our meetings are. So this is for Wednesday the 12th. We're gonna have four class meetings because we haven't seen each other and it's our first day of school. So we're gonna have four live meetings together to kind of talk about classroom things. And I have another slide on this when those meetings are, but you'll see I'll color code them. And then also their uh, small group will be color coded when we start that. So uh, Google Calendar is going to be their friend. If they haven't used it before, it'll be a nice tool for them to keep organized. Curriculum, language arts, we use a benchmark like we did, like you did last year in third grade. Um, we'll be doing um, some of that work on Google Slides. 
we are going to be doing a writing workshop and a lot of that will be pre-recorded lessons um, and live lessons where they're going to actually write in their spiral that I sent home today. Um, we'll have no novel studies in literature circles. We're going to be having a pretty um, intense grammar and vocabulary um, program for the first six weeks. It's called D DLI, which stands for um, Daily Language Instruction and Wordly Wise, which is a vocabulary instruction to get them some really good basics on grammar and vocabulary as we start the year off since we know some um, students haven't been as engaged as they would in a regular classroom with distant learning. And I'll be doing live and recorded lessons on that. Um, independent reading book challenge. I'm going to have them be accountable for their reading because part of their homework is going to be reading 20 minutes a day independently on their own choice book. So this digital reading log that will be in Google Classroom for them to finish is um, basically for August, they're gonna write the title of their book, um, what genre it is, and we're gonna be talking about that as a class in our class meeting. So it's just a recording for me to know that they're still reading and holding them accountable. So you'll see it's date, title, author, pages read, genre, and how they would rate the book. So it's good digital format so we can keep track of their books. Kind of like 40 book challenge, but for me and Gate, I want them just to love reading. So I don't wanna put a number of 40 book challenge. I just want it to be a book challenge so they're all reading. And then at the end of the trimester, I look at this and see how many books the kids have read and their book talks are like book commercials to get people excited about reading a certain book. So for me, it's all about enjoyment of reading. And so then we'll celebrate those that were really avid with their reading at the end of the trimester. And I'm gonna really talk this up with the kids in our meetings so they know that there's gonna be some kind of cool um, special little things if they read the most books in the class, we'll, we'll celebrate them. For math, we do bridges um, and we'll be sending, well, I did send home the student workbook as well as the um, homework book. And then we'll be doing some things with called number corner and number talks. SVMI and problem of the month, I sent two of those packets home. We're gonna be working on those in the next few weeks. So don't have your child start on that yet because I want to start that together on the way I do problem of the month. Um, other teachers might do it a little bit differently, but this is our um, part of our gate program to challenge with um, math. And then I always do like a daily math challenge and I have a weekly math challenge worksheet that's above and beyond the um, regular curriculum we would go through for uh, fourth grade for math. Um, and also I have a lot of project-based learning activities, um, solving math and real world situations that I love to do with our GATE students. Some of you might have a question about math Olympiads. We will be doing math Olympiads um, digitally and online, but we won't be starting that as um, Rockland L as a group um, until the end of September. So more information on math Olympiads will be coming. My goal for math is really for the students to learn more and to explore more with how can you explain your thinking in math and not just solve the problem for the correct answer. So I do a lot with how can you explain that to somebody? What is your thinking? Um, and that's my that's my main focus for math um, with uh, my GATE students is I really want them to be able to explain their thinking. Curriculum for social studies, um, like I said, social studies will be Tuesday and Thursday, and we'll have online and paper newspapers as well as project-based activities. Of course, um, for fourth grade, it's California history, which is really great. Unfortunately, we don't have any information right now about our trip to Coloma. Unfortunately, all field trips have been postponed for now. Um, we might be able to get to do something on a smaller scale in the spring, but we don't really know at that at this point. But let me tell you, Coloma and things around here when the state parks are open, there are so many great um, things you can do as a family. And I'll be sending some of those uh, things out you can do if those things open up um, to supplement with our uh, great social studies curriculum. Science will be mystery science online activities. And I've sent home um, in your science folders some um, packet of information and things to do at home that will go um, with you. And that'll be Wednesday and Fridays for science. 
And then PE will be Tuesdays and Thursdays. Mrs. Brown is our PE teacher and she will have a Google Classroom with activities um, for you to do at home for PE. And she will be having some live meetings with the classroom as well. Uh, for VAPA, this is a, a link here that you can meet Mrs. McCabe if you don't know her. Ah, oh, Mrs. McCabe, she's actually a parent in our class. So everybody should know um, Harmony's mother, Mrs. McCabe. Um, and we're so happy that she's our VAPA teacher. So you can maybe see some things you didn't know about Mrs. McCabe in that link. So shout out to her that she's a, a parent in our class as well as our VAPA teacher. And she's going to have online links for the students and um some live meetings with them as well. And we're gonna schedule that into our days on Wednesday and Fridays. Homework, distance, daily distance learning um, slide assignments should be done daily and turned in at the end of your child's work day. So there's not really any extra homework that will be assigned. Um, the only extra homework besides the work assigned from 8 a.m. to 2.30, is reading for 20 minutes from an independent reading book for our class reading challenge. So reading is really my only extra um, that I would like you to do. And I see, uh, hopefully everybody saw my little typo here, sorry. I'll change that in the PowerPoint link I send you. Um, gate program projects, um, also, we will be doing as a gate group with all the gate classes, we'll be doing a project learning um, activity and more information will come in that. Um, we do a gate newsletter every month. So you'll get some information about our, our whole gate program project as that comes available. And that will be extra. Small group meetings, like I said, are going to be very important. And I'm going to utilize these to meet um, individual needs. The meeting times for those will be Tuesday through Friday, um, either 9, 9.30, 10.45, or 11.15. So your child will be assigned one of those times, and they'll be in a group of six to seven students, and it'll last anywhere from 15 to 30 minutes. So like I said, those are going to be on the checklist at the beginning of the week, so you will know when your child's time is for those small group meetings. That way I can meet with the kids on a smaller setting and get um, some good instruction done with six or seven students. Attendance and grading and assessment. I will be taking attendance at all Zoom meetings and turning in work also counts for your child's attendance for distance learning. Um, students will be given a score in Google Classroom for completion of the work and most assignments will be on a uh, rubric based three being proficient, two approaching, one needing more time, and fours are really only given if mastery is consistent over time. So the way I think of our rubric is if you were thinking about proficient, that would be if the students work, if you're on a 100% scale, if a student's proficient, they are actually 70 to 100% on an assignment. Approaching for proficient is 70% and lower and one is really um is really like lower 50 percent so if you're thinking about that in a percentage way um there's a lot of opportunity pro, pro, for proficiency now fours are only given if the master if mastery is consistent over time so that means like they've been assessed on the same thing over and over again and they're doing above grade level work or um mastery consistent. So they would get a, a four on their um, report card. So um, I grade things like a four, three, two, one scale, just like our report card. Um, and I'll be giving feedback on work through Google Classroom as well as student emails, um, which brings me to this point. Students should be um, checking their email on a regular basis. Um, it's really important um, for me to communicate to, for the students. And I'll be doing that through our live meetings, but I also want to do some written feedback. So those will be on Google Classroom and through their Rockland USD email. So some of them might not be used to checking their email, but have them check that on a regular basis. And I'll let them know that too. Um, and we will be doing online assessments and paper and pencil assessments. The first one was given to you today, which is the Bridges pre-assessment for unit one. So that'll tell me what I need to cover for unit one based on that pre-assessment. So go ahead and have them do that. And I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about how they turn in things in just a minute. The first week's schedule, um, the first three days will be meeting whole group four times. So the times are there on the bottom. On August 12th, 13th, and 14th, we'll be meeting at 8.30, 10.15, 11.30, and 1.30. 
I know that seems like a lot, but I really want us to understand the platforms we're working on, getting to know each other well before the students work too much independently. Um, I will be having some open teacher lab time where the, my I'll have a meeting open and they can ask me questions as they're working independently. So you can count on that for sure, like the beginning of the first full week of school so that they um, understand like what, what they're supposed to do during their independent time. So that'll start on the 17th. Supplies, these are the things that I would love for you to have in your workspace at home. And then the supplies that I gave you today in that white tub are yours to keep and bring back to school when, when and if we start hybrid learning. I would love for those tubs to come back or some of the materials to come back with them. So keep those in a safe space. Pick up and drop off days. After the first six weeks of school, I will have a pick up drop off day to pick up the new DLI Wordly Wise workbook. The one I gave you today is for six weeks. And those days are gonna be September 23rd, 24th, 25th. And I will um, give you some more details about that um, later as we get closer to those days. Also starting on the first week, full week of school, August 17th, I'll have file boxes outside the classroom on Monday and Tuesday from eight to 12. Your child can drop off any completed work they would like me to look at. Um, and I may have some due dates for them to turn some of the paperwork that I give you uh, gave you today to turn those in so that I can see their work. And then I'll also have things in there to pick up sometimes, but I will let you know when um, that work needs to be picked up or when I would like your child to um, send that to me or drop it off. If that doesn't work for you to drop off, we could always send files and uh, work digitally. Which comes to my communication. This parent survey here, when you click on the link, I've sent this to you in an email already. But if you click on that, that gives me um, some information about the way you would like me to communicate so I can kind of get a class survey on that. And if you're able to pick up things from school or if you have the capability of printing things at home so you can print the work for your child instead of picking it up here, that'll save us from printing also. So, um, We'll communicate about that and then we'll set a plan for that once I get all that information. I will do a weekly parent newsletter slide. It won't be anything like this long slideshow for sure. It'll just be a one little snippet slide of what we're doing. And then the student checklist sent out on Sunday. My office hours, that was on the daily schedule I forgot to mention, are Tuesday through Friday, two to three. So feel free to... Um, Message me if you want to do a Zoom meeting, if you have questions or things you want to talk to me live, we can do it that way. You can email me during that time. So um, just know that I'll be available to you and your child um, uh, during that time. And of course, you can always set up an appointment if that time doesn't work for you. Questions. So I know this is a lot, so much information. Um, questions, you can meet me live on Thursday, this Thursday, August 13th at 6.30 to 7.15 for a question and answer session about this presentation or any other questions you have about our year together. I really appreciate you being with us and working with me to make an incredible year, fourth grade gate year for your child. It's gonna be really fun working together and I can't wait to get to know each and every one of you and your children. Um, so thank you so much for listening. I know it was a lot of information. Again, meet with me live on Thursday from five uh, from 6.30 to 7.15. I'll put that slide back on there, 6.30 to 7.15. And then also I'll send out that Zoom link for that meeting. I'll send it out on Wednesday. So I look forward to, to seeing your kids live with me tomorrow at 8.30. I will send that, uh, that link to all of their emails. I will also send that Zoom link to you and it will be in Google Classroom if they've already signed up for Google Classroom. So thank you for listening. I appreciate all of your help this year and support. Good night.